special recording. General Mills, makers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, and Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, presents The Lone Ranger. <laughs> And the haughty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history. Can one find a greater champion of justice? Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Lone Silver, let's go before. Lone Silver, The Lone Ranger. A long time ago, a man fought an enormous animal bigger than an elephant. When I found the bones of that animal in the desert, I realized that size alone doesn't always win. That little man must have prepared himself to conquer the monster. He must have known, even in those days, that champions are made, not born. And that's still true today. Anyone hoping to become a champion needs lots of energy to sharpen his skills and to back those skills with power. Right, Lone Ranger. One of the big reasons champions choose Wheaties is for energy to help them get on their way. It's easy to see where that energy comes from when you know there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Friends, keep in mind this advice from the Lone Ranger. Champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. <laughs> Frank Norton, in the rear office of his combined cafe and gambling hall, looked out the window and watched the stagecoach stop in front of the bank across the street. Two guards, one of them carrying a bulky canvas bag, emerged from the coach and entered the bank. Norton turned to his lieutenant, Eddie Cassidy. Eddie, did you see that? Looks like a money shipment, doesn't it? Sure does, Frank. When the Kansas City stage brings in two men looking after one shipment, it means plenty of money. You, uh... Have any ideas, Frank? Mm. Yeah, I think I have. I have an idea. I want to talk with Lee Madison. But Lee Madison, young teller at the bank, came to Norton's office that afternoon before the gambler summoned him. Madison was visibly disturbed, and there was desperation in his voice as he closed the door behind him. No one saw me come in. Don't worry, no one did. Sit down, Lee. I hear you received a big money shipment at the bank today. Yeah, but I haven't time to talk about that. Frank, the bank president, Mr. Eldridge, told me only a few minutes ago that he's having auditors in tomorrow. They arrived on a stagecoach from Kansas City. So? Oh, Frank, I'm short of my accounts. The money I lost here gambling hasn't been my own. At least not after the first few thousand dollars. I stole $8,000 from the bank. Which I didn't ask you to do and which doesn't concern me in the least. What does concern me is the fact that I hold IOUs for $11,000. What about that? I can't pay you, Frank. You know that. What I do want is for you to lend me $8,000 tonight. Are you crazy? Frank, you must. It'll be only for a few days. Until after the auditors go. I'll get it back to you then. I'm not interested. You see this gun, Lee? Uh, uh, oh, I, uh, thinking I got like that. No reason. Just nervous, perhaps. Lee, all this trouble you're in is of your own making. You know, whatever happens to you, you're the one who caused it to happen. Oh, I don't know. Maybe you're right, but... Frank, Frank, I don't want to go to jail. You're not going to jail. Oh, you... You mean you're going to lend me the money? No. Killing you will be better. Huh? That way you don't have to go to jail. That way you can't implicate me in your crimes. True, I'll lose the money you owe me, but lively, you're more trouble than you're worth. Oh, Frank, 
Oh, don't kill me, please. Of course you don't have to die. No more than you have to go to jail. Oh. Well, what do you mean? You received a big money shipment at the bank this morning. How much was in it? I, uh, Speak uh, up, how much? I'm not sure. Uh, about $25,000. Why? That's a nice sum, Lee. A perfect sum. If you were to make it possible for me to steal that money, I'd cancel that $11,000 you owe me. Oh, but the auditor is still bandaged yours. None of the bank's cash reserves as well as the $25,000 were taken. You have other money in the bank safe, haven't you? I, yeah. So if there's a robbery, you're in the clear. No one will ever know of the shortage. All right. Oh, that's, that's right. And what's more, Lee, uh, I'll cut you in for a share of the loot. You're right. Oh, right. You want me to steal the money? No, not you. That might be too obvious. I'll have some friends of mine do that. And while they're robbing the bank, you'll be able to set up an alibi for yourself and be in the clear. There's not a chance of your being involved if we do this thing right. Lee Madison's desperate situation, Frank Norton's persuasiveness, and Madison's innate weakness of character caused him to relent. He agreed to pave the way for the bank robbery. Later that night, the young bank clerk met the men whom Norton had selected to do the job. They were Eddie Cassidy and Jocko Hinsdale. They met secretly on the outskirts of town, and Eddie Cassidy led the conversation. Now, kids, we talked with Frank after you left his office tonight. He said you'd give us the entire bank set up so we could do this job easy. And that's right. I'll tell you how to get in. I'll give you the safe combination. And when we get away, we'll go right out the mountain trail to the cabin near Wild Creek. You know where that is, don't you? Yeah. Uh, Frank took me there one time, huh? Well, then it's easy. We give you your share of the loot out there like Frank said. That's important to me. Do you have an alibi set up yet? Yeah. Uh, Sheriff Gibson's daughter is on the party at their house tonight. I'm invited and I'll be there. Gibson will be there himself. <laughs> so what better alibi can I have than one given by the sheriff? Good boy. That's being real smart. Well, let's have the information, kid. And give it to us straight and easy. It was shortly after midnight when the two crooks, Matt, made their way into the bank by breaking open the rear door. Safe's over there in the corner, Jocko, behind that counter next to the office. Come on. Here we are. I light the candle and let open this thing. Madison went to the party given at Sheriff Gibson's home and remained there until after midnight. Sure that his alibi was established, he prepared to leave when suddenly the door opened and the soundsman, Roy Cannon, made an excited entrance. Sheriff, the bank's being robbed! What's that? It's being robbed! Are you sure, Roy? Yeah, I saw a light inside and I looked into the window. There's two to all reads kneeling by the door. Come on, then! Where will I get my gun? Oh, it won't have to happen when all my deputies are away. Right. Lee, what's the matter with you? You look shaky. But it's the bank. Well, come along. It's where you work. We we'll need you. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. Sheriff Gibson hurried from his house, followed by Roy Shannon. Lee Madison, ashen faced, lank behind. As the lawman neared the bank, he yelled over his shoulder to Shannon. Roy, we we'll need help. I'll cover the rear door of the bank. You run to the fire bell. And sound the alarm. Arouse everybody out into the street and hurry. As Roy Shannon ran to the huge bell that hung at the end of the street, Sheriff Gibson sped to the rear door of the bank figuring to make an unexpected entrance there. But at that moment, the door opened and two men emerged. One carried a canvas bag and the other held two guns. The sheriff shouted, Get your hands up! I got you! Reach! Before he could shoot, Jocko Hinsdale's guns blazed. As Sheriff Gibson fell to the ground, the robbers ran past him and mounted their horses. Eddie, Eddie, they're sounding the fire alarm. That means the old pan will be out. Jocko, ride back there through the woods. Let's go. Get up there! Get Lone Ranger and Tonto, camping in the hills outside of town, were aroused by the sound of the great bell, heard plainly in the still night. Tonto, that's the alarm bell in town. Something's happened there. Let's go. Uh -huh. A few minutes later, the masked man and Indian astride their great horses started toward town. <laughs> the moon was high in the sky, and the Lone Ranger, looking down on the crossroads below, ranged his horse abruptly. Oh, 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 Tonto, you see down there? Ah, uh, came up Two men ride fast on horses. Yes. The riding band down is across their faces, Tonto. 
I'm sure of it. They're riding away from town. It must be crooks. The only answer. That's why the alarm was ringing. Hello, let's go. We're going after them. Here's the road, fellow. Easy, Silver. Easy, yeah, boy. Come, huh? We lost time coming down to the underbrush, but we'll make it up. Uh-uh. Moon, plenty bright. We see fresh hoof prints and dirt. Come on, Silver. Come, Silver. through water, trying to lose trail. Quiet, Toto. Listen. Ah, uh, we hear horses. Yes, Toto. Perhaps those are their horses. We'll just mount here and make our way quietly to where that sound came from. Easy, steady, be walked out. Easy, come on. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scene, Please permit us to pause for just a few moments. The champions are made not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. You'll never get discouraged if you keep in mind champions are made, not born. Let's see how Tom Fears, past catching in for the Los Angeles Rams, got on his way. At 12, Tom played football a lot. And many a bump is what he got. But he kept trying, never quit. And here's what helped to keep him fit. He ate his Wheaties every bit. Today, Tom sparks those touchdown drives. It's Wheaties still on which he thrives. Wheaties to Fears. There's a fast combination that's been clicking steady now for 19 years. Real energy in Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties place. Okay, Tom, smash that pass. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way, he's on his way, on his way, get on your way, with Wheaties, cause champions are made not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way, get on your way, get on your way, get on your way, with Wheaties. Cause champions are made not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way, get on your way, get on your way, with Wheaties, breakfast of champions. into the deep brush, tied them to a sapling, then made their way through the thick underbrush heading toward Wild Creek. They saw a clearing ahead and were about to circle around it when they saw the outlines of a shack in the moon-bathed night. A cabin, daughter. Ah. See? Horses tied to tree near creek. I think those are the men we've been trailing. Hello, we'll crawl to the grass and approach the cabin from the rear. <laughs> Someplace like that? Uh, now, what do you say? It's a deal, Jacko. Good. Let's put the money back into this bag. Yeah. Yeah. And there. Uh, push that pile of bills over, huh? Right. That's it. At the French. Yeah. You ready to go now? Sure. Eddie, carrying the money filled bag, led the way to the door and opened it. What's your hurry, boys? Hey, wait. 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 The map, man. Move back into the cabin. You're covered. Jocko behind Eddie and shielded by his partner, drew his gun. Out of the way, Eddie. Let me... Oh, my arm. 
man shot. Who did that? Nice shooting, Toto. I had a friend covering you from the window, Eddie. Drop that bag and reach for the ceiling. Oh. That's it. Come inside, Toto. Look, look at my arm. It's bleeding. Toto will bandage it. You're not going to die. Oh, you, you and your pal were listening outside. Yes, watching too. You were so busy with your loot, you didn't see us, did you? No. That's why we were able to cover you from both sides. You must have a, a sick, wounded man. Yes, Toto. When you've done that, ties wrists and ankles. Uh-huh. I'll do the same to this fellow. Hey, what's the idea? You're going to leave us here and take the money? No. We'll stay and wait for your other pal, the bank clerk. The one you call the kid. The Lone Ranger and Toto bombed the two crooks after Jocko's wound had been bandaged. Then the masked man sternly gave instructions to the two crooks. He ended by saying, And you'll do exactly as I say, or we'll use our guns. You understand? Yeah, I hear you. If you want to take the kid, go ahead. He's the one that got us into this. Yeah, yeah, he's the one. We'll do what you say. All right. But judging from what I heard, Frank Norton's the one who got you into this. Sit down on these chairs in front of the table. All right. Now stay there. Do as I told you. We'll be crossed behind the table. Just in case you get ideas. Don't worry about that. Oh, no, put out that lamp, please. Okay, my sorry. Yeah. Good. Now we'll wait. A short time later, they heard a horse stop outside. Then, after an interval, the door to the shack opened and the figure stood there, silhouetted in the moonlight. Eddie. Jack. You hear? Yeah, kid. Come inside and close the door behind me. Sure. What's the matter with the lamp? Leave it out. Might be seen from the outside. Did anybody see your head up this way, kid? No. No, I made sure of that. I rode behind the posse. The posse kept riding along the road down below. I waited till they came to a turn the trail. And I fell back and made my way up here. They didn't get wise to me at all. Where's the money? Here. The highness on the table. Well, what about the sheriff? Did he... Did he die? No. He just wounded. What about Frank? Where is he? He didn't ride with the posse. Last I saw him, he was sitting in the rear of the cafe, playing cards with three other fellows. Sure he would but, be. But look, I want my share of the money. Where is it? I say, when the fellows just keep sitting there... Put on a light for at least a couple of minutes, huh? I'll do that. Who? Who who was that? See? The lamp's on. The mask man. And an Indian. Eddie. Jocko. That's no good, kid. They haven't tied up. I'll get out of here. You stay here. Don't shoot that gun. And come back into the center of the room and start talking. Talking? Uh, About what? Everything. And you'd better talk fast. He's a tough hombre, kid. You're just a pigeon. You'd better talk. Besides, he's promised to take me to a doctor when they get back to town. Back to town? Yes. What's your name? Madison. Lee Madison. Keep away from me, please. I, I can't stand anymore. I can't. What do you want me to tell you? Everything. I'll ask questions as we ride along. When Lee Madison, his nerves completely shattered, finished his confession... The Lone Ranger and Tonto placed him and the other two crooks on horses. Now we're riding to town. We'll ride behind you with guns ready all the way. When we get there, if the posse hasn't returned, we'll go to Norton's office. Then if things go as I plan, we've got the whole story. All right, go on. Get out there. Come on, Silver. I'll stop you. A short time later in his cafe... Frank Norton spread five cards in front of the pile of blue chips stacked in front of him. He looked mockingly at the three other players, the only men in the otherwise deserted building. Aces and trays, men. I can't seem to lose a hand tonight. The cards are running for you. They're... What's the matter? What are you fellows looking at? Look behind you, Frank. A masked man with a gun. He came from your office. What? Sit down, Norton. If you don't know, shoot you down. There. I'm sitting. What is this? A hold up? The card game you're playing? Sure, it's a hold up. It always has been. What? You've been cheating these men just as you've cheated everyone who ever gambled in your place. The wheels are fixed. The cards are marked. That's a lie. I'm just lucky. Your luck's run out, Norton. You men who've been playing here, put out the card you've been using face downward on the table. Sure, sure, I'll do that. Let me prove something to you men. Those cards are readers. 
They're marked on the back in a way that you can't notice. That's a lie. Don't believe in this down. I've studied the ways of crooks. I'll tell you what those cards are. Check me and see if I'm right. Starting at the left, the ten of diamonds. Then the ace of clubs. The nine of hearts. The six of diamonds. The man's man's calling them right. Dirty, Lord, you dirty, dirty thief. Let's lynch him. Now, wait, man, wait. I believe you're honest, men. Lee Madison said you were when he saw you out here. Lee Madison? Where's he? In your office, Norton, with your two bank robbers, Baldy and Jocko. They're ready to tell their part in your conspiracy. Man, Norton is the one behind that bank robbery tonight. The robbers are inside, including the one who shot Sheriff Gibson. Man Ranger had difficulty restraining the angry men as he told the story of Lee Madison and his part in the bank robbery. He ended. And the only thing to do is let the law decide the punishment of this man and his partner. We'll hold them all, stranger. And we'll find a way to get back the money he took from us over the years by cheating. So will Lee Madison, I think. But he'll pay the penalty for his thievery in this night's nice robbery. Boys, look at the property. Here's Deputy White. Come on in. We have the man who robbed the bank and all the money they stole. We have proof of that sort. It was two hours later when Lawman, with Lee Madison's help, had the confessions of all the crooks involved. Deputy Sheriff White said... And every crime but murder is on the list. And it's just luck that Sheriff Gibson's going to live. Oh, we'd have murder, too. Madison, will you sign the confession? Yeah, I'll be glad to. And I'll take whatever punishment's coming. Well, what are we waiting for? You going to take me to jail? Get it over with. I'll take you, Norton. And I'll plate the guard around the plate to keep you from being lynched. But the owner of arrest and you should go to the... See... Where is the masked man? In the Indian just left. Slipped out without even saying a thing. The masked man did enough to clean up this town. And I happen to realize who he is. That's why we should all say thanks to the Lone Ranger.